Welcome. This video has some technical details about the hovercraft that I thought would be helpful to see on video. And for even more detail, go to my website, DeLoreanHovercraft.com. Okay, I just want to explain the cockpit real quick. Um, got all your light switches here. Anti-gravity is for the lights under the tires. Flux capacitor for the colored lights under the hull. Cockpit lights, navigation lamps, keep the Coast Guard happy, headlights, Mr. Fusion, not connected to anything yet. Uh, this is ignition for the thrust, ignition for lift, throttle control for the lift, choke control for lift, choke control for thrust, tachometer for lift, tachometer for the thrust. GP, digital GPS speedometer and fuel gauge. So the issue with the fuel tank right now, it's it's working, but there's the fuel sender lever down there is a little loose. So sometimes it will get itself in a weird angle and this thing won't work. I'm going to try to fix that one more time, but um, it hasn't been a priority because uh, with the, only there's only three gallons the wheels sloshing around all the time, so this thing just isn't very accurate, so um, I just haven't really bothered with it. But, so there's no guarantee that the fuel gauge is going to work. The other thing with the fuel tank is that this fuel sender isn't sealed perfectly against the plastic. I should use a different kind of uh, gasket sealant on here. And because um, if you shake it up, there'll be a little, little amount of gasoline will like seep through the cracks, which is not the safest thing. So uh, I have a separate brand new gas tank, which you can use if you don't want to mess with the fuel gauge. If you want to try to make this one work, um, we can try to do that. Yeah, steering wheel can be removed. If you have a passenger, you're going to want to move the seats here and here so that... You balance out the weight and have the steering wheel in there, but if you're by yourself, stick the steering wheel in there. Um, so real quick, I'll show you the lights. Um, so we got these cool colored strong LEDs. There's an app on your phone. You can connect to a Wi-Fi controller that's in there and change the lights. You want green, you want blue, you want red, white. You can customize functions here. Um, where's that one? There's the A's, <laughs> green and yellow, giants, orange and black. So here are the lights under the hull, the flux capacitor on the switch panel. As you can see, they still work on the front and on the starboard side. And in the rear, they work on that half. But the other half, port side, is just white. Because up here on the corner, uh, the housing of the LED strip was cracked. And so now the data signal doesn't get in here to change the color. So I don't know what that would be like on the water. I don't know if it would short out if it's in the water. But on land, it works. So. Just letting you know that's that situation. So this is the the console is hold on held on by magnets here, and uh, back here you got your fuse fuse system and the circuit breaker right here controls the fuse panel, and there's another circuit breaker right here that controls the uh, power to the uh, thrust engine starter, so you can turn that off when you're working on it. Um, and then power goes to solenoid for the lift engine, regular lawnmower battery, wires going back here from the accessory circuit, the power fuel pump, fuel sender, GPS, speedometer, uh, fuel gauge. And, um, and then some of the wires go back in this conduit along with the steering cable and choke control, throttle control cables. Yeah, I want to give you a close-up of the 
leather texture on the armrests and door panels cast from a mold I made of the real DeLorean. You can uh, have the molds if you want to make a new one someday. Okay, I wanted to get some more information about this door here. So I added some silicone pads to the corner of the door jams so that the door isn't just resting bare fiberglass to fiberglass. Uh, this door doesn't sit quite as perfectly as this one in the door jam, so what I usually do is just close it, kind of pulling back a little bit, and then push forward when it's in the jam, and then push down on the back of the, of the armrest to latch it like that. Um, that's because this door doesn't sit as perfectly, and it's just nice to get as more pressure downward so it looks better on the outside. You could adjust this, of course, to make it a little easier, not having to push down to lock it, but that's just how it is right now. There's two two main pieces that were cast, the door piece and then the armrest piece. And at the seam between them, uh, occasionally over time they might open up, you might be able to see a crack. So just put some caulking in there like there is now, because uh, you don't want moisture getting into the foam that's behind there. That has happened before, especially on this one, there was some moisture that was dripping out and I had to, you know, try to air it out. So there's probably some moisture inside the door. Um, so just be aware of that. Try to keep any cracks sealed. This door closes easier than the other one. Uh, just really easy like that. This door easily sits pretty flush. It's, there is a little bit of an offset there. Um, but this one has a little bit more. So, just so you know, if it's not latched, uh, the way it will just sit naturally, you know, there's more of a offset there. But if you latch it, there's less. I should have put caulking in here before I use this mirror because now it's got some corrosion behind there. But they're not, I don't actually use them for anything, it's just for looks. So this is the control switch for the light pattern. You can, you can turn it off from here if you want, um, but mostly you're just going to use this for mode. So you change the mode, see right now it's just slow flashing, you can change it to uh, strobe or whatever, a bunch of different modes and a bunch of different speeds. So I just leave it at the one I like and I don't even mess with it and this will just turn it on and off, it'll keep the same mode. Dashboard is here, this, this slides in there and uh, it's held on with these velcro tabs. But you're going to want to remove it when you're working on stuff and when you're on the freeway. Uh, try it so it doesn't blow away. I want to show you the windshield. I haven't been using this very much lately, uh, but because it limits visibility, um, but it's nice to not get as wet sometimes. So you can decide if you want to use it, and it just pops in here, and there's these marine cabinet hardware that fold, fold it in. And that's how that works. This lift engine guard I made recently pops out real easy so it makes maintenance way simpler than it was before and uh, so I made a new uh, air intake here that, that yeah makes all the maintenance easier everything's open and you can see it and clean it and everything those are the splitter pipes that direct air to the skirt this is the new skirt I want to explain this here uh, for years I had a skirt that was completely clear vinyl with no uh, fibers reinforcing it. And so you could see see everything. All the light would come through. Um, as you can see in some of the videos, it looks super cool. Uh, but it's dangerous because if there's a ho hole that happens, then it can just, the hole can spread and get really big and then you lose hover power. So I made this new skirt with 
with this stuff it's it's more like translucent you can see through it but a lot of the light gets blocked by the fibers so it's still translucent you can still see light coming through you can still see on the video with all the, the colorings scrolling lights it lights up this thing really well at night um i just wanting to let you know that's different than in some of the videos um the tires here are held on with these zip ties and i got electrical connectors here that power the lights so as you can see the 45k sign is gone from last year I tried to sell it for 45k on eBay and got a bid for 40k but that fell through and it all turned out for the best because the past year since that happened has been the most epic year ever going on Jay Leno show and being in all these music videos and so it's been really fun I'm glad <laughs> I waited another year uh, another big development is this new thrust engine so um, actually on the Jay Leno show the I had an aftermarket magneto on this side and it started failing when it would get wet and so um, actually yeah it broke down with Jay Leno in the car um, so that was unfortunate so I decided to just get a whole new engine even though it, the whole thing didn't really need to be replaced but I figured it would give more confidence to the new buyers so you have a brand new thrust engine uh, I've used it a few times. It's broken in now. Um, let me just show you basically the wiring. Charging circuit comes from the voltage regulator onto the solenoid post for the um, high current line here. The thrust motor, starter motor. Um, this is a disconnect for the um, ignition circuit, magneto kill wire and fuel shutoff solenoid the ground post in here and this is a disc you can disconnect here if you want to take any of these wires off um, show you the belt drive up close it's kind of hard to get this in photos And you can see there's a uh, tensioner, belt tensioner here I made. Keeps the belt from flapping around. The exhaust manifold is, is brand new, newly powder coated, so that's good. Should stay rust free for a long time. This um, thrust fan guard. Uh, hasn't been changed in seven years and I've never had a problem with it but if you're gonna have small kids in here with small hands you know you won't want them uh, you don't want them back here on the engines running uh, it, it would probably be smart to um, get fencing with smaller holes or just put another layer of this fencing on top staggered so it's uh, the holes are smaller I haven't had a problem with it this fancy engine cover I made, Velcro's on here, um, fuel system, we got a three gallon tank in here, and the way you change, uh, fill up the tank when you need to is, uh, well this, this cinches down, holds it in place, you just loosen that up and pop this quick disconnect off. Do it with two hands, but there you go. And then this slides out, and you can refill it. That's a water separator filter just installed. You're going to want to use uh, gasoline with no ethanol if possible because uh, water can dissolve in the ethanol and create problems. All right, what else? I got new stainless steel door lifts. These rudders are brand new. Uh, I made them stronger than the other ones, and um, these bolts can be removed. They're threaded into an aluminum tube in here with a bunch of thread locker in here, and so you could, could remove it if you needed to. Um, 
but they should be really solid. Oh, the whole rudder thing can be removed if you take out these four nuts and undo the turnbuckle that tightens, you can see that turnbuckle that tightens the steering cable. You can just pop the whole rudder system off and um, like if you needed to get the fan out or anything like that. The paint is all brand new, so you can see how that looks. It's nice and shiny. Over time, it might get a little duller, um, so just try not to use any harsh cleaners on it or um, try not to let the salt dry for too long on there. If you're in salt water, wash it off with fresh water as soon as you can. Keep the paint looking nice and shiny for a long time. Patch the deck. There were some areas that had a like a crack or something and water got in and so I had to replace some of the door skin plywood that's under here. A lot of that has been actually replaced over the years with Cormat. Um, it's kind of a thick fiberglass. And so um, I can show you how to patch things if you need to. It's pretty fun, pretty easy. Uh, interesting work. It's all just styrofoam and fiberglass, so it's easy to fix if something, if something happens. If you crash, it'll just crumple, and then you just pour new foam on it and fiberglass it. Um, I should mention this quarter panel um, has some issues. I, I leave these holes open behind the duct tape, so that I can take the, take the duct tape off to air them out. There is a crack here that um, whenever I try to patch it, it, the crack just opens up again. It seems like um, there's some flex in the hole and this just happens to be a stress point and this crack will open up no matter what. So it doesn't matter, this is not a functional piece, it's just for looks. Um, these are just the consequences that water gets in here and so there's a little more delaminations here than other areas and um, so I leave this hole open here put some duct tape over it while I'm hovering on the water when I get out take the duct tape off and moisture will get out of there and um, so it's not ideal but that's just how it is it doesn't really seem to matter it's been like that for years and it seems to be fine so the navigation lamps, this is homemade LEDs in clear epoxy resin. Uh, a few of the LEDs in here have, have burned out over the past seven years. But as you can see, it still has the white lights all the way around and then the red and the green and the yellow flashing. So, um, but the point is the Coast Guard has never like inspected this or have it approved. Um, so I just want to let you know, I've never had a problem, but that's just how it is. This is the condition the seats are in. There's some small stains, but I think it's pretty good for seven years old. And they ratchet up like this. And to push it all the way forward and it goes down. There's the other one. I'll just show you what the tires look like up close. There's the LED strip. I just kind of sit right here. Four zip ties each for the back two tires and two zip ties each for the front two tires. These are just very lightweight. It's just solid styrofoam with some fiberglass and the LED strip. There's nothing else in there.
These are real DeLorean grills here and side marker lights. That logo is real, but it usually is on the hood. And this is a real DeLorean logo too. Yeah, so that's what, you, what I thought would be helpful to see on video. There'll be more technical information uh, on the website, just a bunch of random details. Now check out the clip of how to use the trailer. So once you get it set up, it's actually really easy. You just turn on the hover motor and it floats off. You can do this by yourself. Just keep a hand on it and it's actually really easy to move around. At some points you might need to lift up on the back um, to help it along, but you'll see, it's pretty easy. Here we go. So you've had the time of your life out on the water. You just hovered up the boat ramp and uh, parked up on the pavement. So what you do is you set up your trailer again, like we showed you before, and uh, get your winch, your winch cable clipped onto the tow point in front, and you get your winch remote control here, and you just turn on the hover motor and press the in button and walk it up, and then. Uh, that's how you do it all right so when you got the delorean on the trailer and you're ready to go you just position it so that these pull-down brackets when they swing in will kind of cup the corner of the hole. And, and then you hook on your ratcheting strap on one end and do the same thing on the other end. And swing it on, hook it in, and tighten it down. That's it, you do the same thing on the back, and you lock the doors down, make sure your pin is in the trailer here, so it won't tilt, and you're good to go. So hopefully you can see it's all custom made to make this really easy and efficient, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. So thank you, enjoy your, your DeLorean.